Good morning, all. Steve Parisi here with IVC Global. Hope your day is off to a great start. So for today's podcast, we've got a guest that some of you are likely familiar with. Number one, Captain Stephanie Transu. Stephanie, how are you this morning? Good morning, Steve. <laughs> I am doing great. Thank you for having me on today. Definitely. Thanks for taking time, too. I know we're always, you know, going through the everyday stuff here at the office, and I know you've got a full plate, as always, as you stay busy, which <laughs> we all appreciate. So today should be fun. I wanted to talk to you a little bit just to uh, provide more, call it um, awareness, or or call it what you typically see and hear on the front lines because your role at the company is working with prospects, clients, people who are interested in high cash value life insurance, the banking concept, every single day from initial education, from fielding questions, from designing policies. We've got a design department, but you know how to design them on the fly. If you've got something, hey, I got to get this out quick from that business process. So you, you are on that front line and you have been for quite some time. So just kind of wanted to talk through some stories and such that you see all the time. This way listeners can hear, hey, what, what does IBC Global do as far as the agents and someone I would be talking to like Stephanie, which you've been here as an agent longer than any other agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm definitely been with you guys for almost three years now. Yeah. Yeah. I recall that. And you started when we were just kind of getting going as far as expansion. I mean, you're the first full-time agent that jumped in and were a huge help to me at the time because you we were trying to train other departments. I didn't know what I was doing from a business standpoint. I, I didn't. I still don't. I just <laughs> copy what I learned from others. But it was a huge help. And the thing that I, I admired about you is you you just kind of grabbed it and went with it and learned as you went. You know, and we can get into some of the stories too, but the thing that is very difficult to find in the insurance agent, agent, well, insurance agent world, or just when you're recruiting, is someone that will pick up the phone and say, okay, I'm going to call the individual and I'll just talk to him. I'll follow the script and I'll learn as I go. Kind of that fearlessness. Would you call that fearlessness? Let me ask that. <laughs> On your I end. definitely would, you know, especially when I first started, had no idea. I had, you know, background in the insurance business, had no idea or had any clue or how the banking concept worked or, you know, high cash value life insurance, had no idea whatsoever. So it was pretty scary at first coming in and talking to people and trying to find out, you know, especially when they had questions and I'm like, oh, let me follow the script, you know, and the more I did it, the more I learned, the more I listened to you, of course, that's when I learned the most. I um, mean, you have so much knowledge and you're so easy to talk to uh, and ask any questions to. So you were a huge help through that whole process. Gotcha. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. And no, I like how you you dive in, dove into it. I know I've told you that several times over the years, but your work ethic is definitely, uh, it's it's five stars, so keep it up. Um, so what I wanted to talk about mainly is just what you hear on an everyday basis. So as clients or prospects call in, maybe they see our video content, they're interested in cash value life insurance, the banking concept, retirement planning, how policy loans, whatever it might be. What are some things you often see here and it can even be a story that you you know recently encountered just something that that recently popped up yeah one of the things that we get a lot is policy design just yeah. making sure that we're designing a policy for the maximum cash value minimizing that insurance expense and such i did talk to a gentleman uh not so long ago where he went to another agent presented a uh, policy with New York Life, you know, he asked specifically, design me a policy where I have that minimum premium at the lowest, maximum cash up front. And when he got the samples, he was quite disappointed. He was saying that that premium was a lot more than what he expected and break even point was not until much later. So he was quite disappointed, but then he's been watching our YouTube channel and he's been educating himself. So he knew that it is possible to drive that premium the lowest and just put more money into the pay, paid up additions rider. So he came to us and asked us for the signs. So we do get a lot of that, especially when clients are already researching and they already know what they're looking for. So it, and it is pretty nice to know, hey, as an agency, we're able to present a good product where not only the client is happy with the policy design, but also the companies that we are presenting. 
yeah. you know, and that's huge. Um, in the insurance business, there's so many insurance companies out there, and it could be quite confusing for a client to know who to go for, uh, who to look for and such. But, you know, as you always mentioned, the four major mutuals, you cannot go wrong with any of them. And of course, keeping or picking a company that is flexible as well, so that you're always having that flexibility to add money at any time, request any loans from your policy with no problem and such. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, right on. No, no, I, I love that what you're going through there. So let me let me ask a, a couple questions on that because you hit a good point that I still get questions about every week. I'm sure you get it every day is when you mention those four major mutual companies. So Mass, Guardian, New York Life, Northwestern Mutual, regardless if a prospect, prospect works with us or anyone under the sun, those companies, when well designed, have delivered strong cash values. However, I could take those companies and I can take Mass or Guardian that have 10 different whole life products each. Northwestern has a large portfolio. New York Life, they do, but they don't. They're custom whole life. You can make it any funding period you want, really. So how, how would I refine that decision-making process? So if I'm someone and I come to you, I'm a, a potential client, I say, okay, Steph, like, uh, I've, I've seen you guys talk about the four major mutuals. I like that. I get it. But how do I pick? Because I, I see Mass and Guardian out there, you know, but like, which one do I pick? I don't know. Tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. So we always, you know, like we always mentioned education, providing the options, not, not only provide the numbers and it's like, here, you know, this is what you should do. We will go over to, especially asking questions, asking what kind of flexibility would you want to have? Here are the pros and the cons with both companies. Um, you know, as you know, both companies are great, cannot go wrong with any one of them. The big thing would be the flexibility aspect. Would you want to be able to flow your money at any time throughout the whole year? Or would you be okay with a one-time lump, you know, dump in or contribution or however you would like? Um, and just going through that information between the two companies and their flexibility and how they're uh, another big thing we get to, especially with that, especially the younger generation, where they say, hey, I want to be quick. I don't want to be calling customer service and asking for this and that. I want to be able to go through my phone or go through the computer and request a loan. And that's big. These companies provide that. So with either one, they provide that easy access to your cash value, but it also depends on the flexibility aspect. Asking questions is key. Yeah, there you go. The question, uh, asking questions, that is the most important thing. That way you can really help guide guide someone in the right decision, right direction. So why don't we, we kind of role play it a little bit because a lot of clients or potential people, people we work with ask these kind of questions. So if I call in and I say, okay, I'm interested in this concept. I get that a whole life insurance policy, well-designed, is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money. I get that. I'm still a little gray on the flexibility. Steve's got way too much content. He confuses me sometimes. I'm looking to put in $100,000 per year, but I don't want to get a bill for that. Like I like the idea of putting up to 100K, but don't bill me because my cash flow fluctuates. Like what what company should I pick or how do I even set that up? This way it's convenient for me and I'm not stressed out thinking about my policy. Good question, Mr. Parisi. Well, <laughs> when it comes to one of the companies that we work with, they will allow one to commit just to that minimum base premium and the term vital cost as well. Anything aside from that, your paid up additions can be added at any time through your online account portal at your own leisure and discretion, especially when you're looking at uh, the cash flow if it fluctuates, whether you are investing in real estate or if you have a bonus coming in through any time throughout the year, that specific company will allow you you to do that and not be um, penalized either if you're not able to max it out for that year either. So at any time, any questions on that, Mr. Clients? Oh, gotcha. No, thanks. So so flexibility. So you said I could commit to the minimum premium. So if I want the ability to put in a hundred grand, what would my minimum commitment be in a case like that? Mm -hmm. The insurance companies we work with will allow us to set that minimum premium to 10% of the max contribution desired. So in this case, with the max space or MEC limit of $100,000, we're able to drive that minimum premium to $10,000 every single year. And then you're able to 
up, add money in there up to the 100,000. Okay, gotcha. So in a case like that, right? So if again, if I'm a potential client, I can commit to 10,000 per year. Do I have to pay that annually or can I do it monthly if I want it to be lower? You're flexible in the aspect too. You can either do it annually, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually. Gotcha. When you're doing any payment aside from that annual, there are small EFT fees, but you do have the flexibility where you're able to fluctuate, especially if life happened. You can start paying monthly if you wanted to. And let's say mid-year, if you say, hey, I have that extra cash. I don't want to think about it anymore. I just want to pay that off for the rest of the year. You can definitely do that as well. Gotcha. Thank you. So I can commit to that minimum of 10K, whether that's yearly or monthly, whatever it might be. And then the rest of the 100K, do I, uh, you did mention it's flexible. Do I have to pay that? You don't have to pay it at all. That's, you know, again, because you are committing to that minimum, yeah. you just have the flexibility to add additional paid up additions gotcha. whenever you would like. Gotcha. Okay. So, so up to a total of 100. And how do I actually add it? Do I have to like send it a check? Good question. You will have an online account portal. With that specific company, you will also get, get a phone app. With that phone app, it works the same way as online banking. You're able to allocate where your money is going, whether it's going to paid up additions. If you're taking a loan out and you want to pay that loan back, you can also request that or pay that back through that online account portal or your well online, online portal and phone app as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thanks for going through that, Steph. So you touched on several things there that just build more awareness for a consumer. And where I'm coming from with this is my experience in the insurance industry and just sales training is typically, and you can relate to this because you were at, a, at another sales role before you came here, is typically when a consumer has a question, the training, the general training is answer that question and just leave it at that, which works from a sales perspective. But what I've found in experience is if you're leaving out some important information, but your goal is to sell, so you leave out that information just to make it quicker, that can come back to bite you. Like the client gets upset to say, you didn't tell me that, and now this thing's a headache. So a couple of things you did there, and I know your clients appreciate this, everyone does, is when someone asks, hey, I, I want to be able to put in $100,000, but my commitment is 10K per year, and it'll be the same if I want to commit to 10 or be able to pay in 10,000, commit to a thousand, it doesn't matter. But back to the 10,000, do I have to pay it annually? And you mentioned, no, I, no, you can pay it monthly, any frequency, frequency that you want. But if you pay it monthly or some other frequency, there's small EFT fees, which that, that can sting some people. They don't like that stuff. Some don't mind it, but if you don't tell them about it, then they are going to mind it. So it's a little thing there, but it goes a long way just in that transparency, making people aware. This way, no one has the feeling that you put them in a product and then afterwards they come back and say, you didn't tell me about this. Now I'm angry at you. And this happens so much in the industry. So that that is something like I've seen you do that quite a bit. And it's important because you don't want to leave anything out. And it's kind of an art too to know, okay, how do I provide all the info, but don't have motor mouth and just put them to sleep by talk, 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 talk. Um, I'm talking a lot here. Any thoughts or questions on that? <laughs> no, I think it's it's right. You know, transparency is big because like, like you mentioned, in any sales role, um, you know, or trainings at times are like, hey, you know, let's say for example, if you're buying a, a purchasing a car and you want to find out the price for once, like, oh, you got to come in and we'll tell you the price in hand. No, I'm looking for information. Give me the information that I'm asking for. So giving the information and just being, being transparent about any details on a product is very important. I'm the type of person to where if I'm looking for something, I, I want to, you know, get the facts and be quicker as possible. Don't waste my time or waste your time either. So I think that's very important that we are very transparent with our clients. I, I, I love that so much, just that transparency and how you like to buy things, doing that to others. So the golden rule, do to others as you want done to you. That goes such a long way just in business. So, I, I mean, your job by the outside world would be classified as a sales role. But let me just ask a, a blunt question. Do you feel like you're in sales? Not, no, not one bit, yeah. you know, because... 
well, you know, when it comes to when you think about regular salesperson, yeah. you're like, oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be pushy. I'm gonna push my product down your throat, and you, you got to do it. <laughs> We're not like that, you know. First off, the clients that are coming to us, they already are looking into the concept. They are either fully educated and have specific questions. We'll have other ones where they say, hey, I just stumbled upon this. Can you tell me the most information there is? Let help me understand it. So. You know, and by just going through the whole process, it could just be a conversation. Yeah. It could just be a comfortable conversation with one, you know, one on one with someone and just going through, you know, from the beginning, what we do, how we structure everything, the companies that we present, how they feel about what I've, information that I've presented to them and see if there's anything that we can improve or, hey, you know, let's what's the next step? Yeah, absolutely. Present the information and then when they're ready, they'll move forward and you'll help them out. I mean, when they've seen enough to make a decision, they're, they'll know that and they can move forward. But the the um, lack of or no pressure or forcing people to move forward, I've always disliked that stuff. Um, and I know most of the people here dislike it as well that work at the company. I know you don't like it. Um, it doesn't, and not to say it doesn't work. Some people are very successful with that and there's ways to do it, but it can turn people off. It turns me off. Like I ain't going to buy from someone who tries to to close me the wrong way at the wrong time. Like get lost, man. I'm going to go buy from your competitor if you try and do that. Seriously. Like it's more of a, call it a sales psychology, just listening to people, providing the information, and then they move when they're ready. Exactly. And the funny thing is with the other agency I work with, that's how it was. You know, we will go to people's homes, present the product and be like, okay, where's the check? Yeah, you know, yeah. is, is this a good, a good thing? So, you know, to be honest, I did not feel comfortable with that at all. So coming over to IVC and seeing a whole different kind of uh, customers and just the whole information was so much better. I, you know, I just feel so so good what we do as an agency. Gotcha. No, likewise, the feeling's mutual. And funny story, so the place you started out is actually the same place I started out when I first got in the insurance industry. You lasted there longer than I did. I, it was not a, it didn't fit my personality. I left after nine months for a number of reasons. But yeah, I, I remember that same office, a lot of the same management, uh, just when you were sharing it with me, even though it was years after the fact. But yeah, not that that means anything. Funny story. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time this morning. Um, for everyone listening, we've got Steph's contact info below. Feel free to reach out to her direct, or if you reach out to our company, you may very well get a call from Steph or an email. Um, but really, really appreciate your time, Steph. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It Definitely. was always a pleasure. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.